Hey, welcome to Live from Dennis's House. Today, we are spotlighting 1984, the year in review. Everything 1984. We're going to have all different viewpoints of the crew up here. We're all going to give our viewpoints of 1984 and what we went through, the struggles and the challenges. <laughs> oh, I got, I'm going to jump right into this before we play a song because I had a trauma occur to me back in 1984 that um, I have to backtrack a little bit. But 1982, I turned 18. Right, okay. and it was greatest thing ever. I was going to be able to drink. The drinking uh, age back there oh. was eighteen. Yeah. Bam! Right before I turned yes. eighteen, they raised it to nineteen. Yes. I said, "You sons of bitches! <laughs> I will get you if it's the last a, thing I do." Like really and being the law-abiding you know teenager what? that you were, yes. I'm sure you <laughs> ate it. I was dying for my first taste oh, of no. alcohol. Yeah, the it was into my partying. You know, right. It's like dangling. Like a carrot. In well, front it of gets you, worse. Be it, patient. It, it gets worse. Dramatic. Listen, it gets worse because Sorry. then in 1984, I'm just turning 19. I'm just uh, being able to drink again, and <laughs> they raise it to 21. Oh, now let me ask you. So right. you I got. Paranoid? I got one whole month out of it oh, from the end of November, point. just the month of December. I was able to drink freely, oh, and then they raised it to twenty-one. That explains and them yes. raising the drinking. Yeah. I think Koch had it out for me. That yeah, yeah. that's he blew why. It for everybody, yeah. Quick, Magellan's turning oh, nineteen. You know what happened too? That drove me even crazier. Also, this was the time that where they reinstated the draft, and they expected oh, me yeah. to sign up yeah. to be drafted into the yeah. army. You but can't you drink, drink, but you're good enough. <laughs> you're not responsible enough to drink. Yes. but here's an M16. Yes. We're sending you to oh, Afghanistan. Yeah. They, they right? hated you. Yeah. Exactly, they hated right? You. So here's yeah. this, the thing, though. <laughs> Me being a rebel, I refused to sign up for the draft. Mm. I said, until I'm able to drink, I'm not signing up for the draft. Oh. And you can imagine what my mother was saying. Oh, oh my God, Bob, we're going to lose the house. <laughs> They're going to arrest him. They're going to take the house from us. And, oh, and every day, beautiful. every day she was harassing me. You better sign up for that draft. And it was a daily <laughs> meeting about it. <laughs> we had oh, uh, lawyers on. And he, and he was Stand illegally by. drunk. Uh, and what was yes, the drinking yes. age in Canada? How long were you there? Yeah, it was 14 in Canada. So uh, <laughs> there was no problem. Yes. So uh, lose the house. Oh I remember God. that. That was a big exactly. Thing my house, oh, that's too. the thing. We'll Did anyone ever lose the house? No. Did you know anyone that lost their house? Because no. my parents, no. every. Oh, Friends, parents, God always forbid. losing the house. <laughs> right, right. And no one ever lost the house. No matter what you right, did, right. you go That's outside true. with no shoes on. Oh, we're going to lose the house. <laughs> uh, my friend's coming over. Oh, we'll lose the house. He'll fall down the stairs. <laughs> And uh, no one's ever lost uh, their house yeah, for that that's, reason. That's, that's good. That's so, true. Uh, now uh, I need uh, to look that up. Instances of people who have lost their homes. <laughs> right, right, right. Terrible, 19. frivolous lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be funny? And there's like there's a whole documentary about people who's, who've lost their house for stupid kids uh, <laughs> acting like idiots. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, so we're going to play 1984 by David Bowie. And Sarah's personal favorite song was actually her wedding song, 99 Luftballoon. Oh, by yeah. Nina. <laughs> <I'm laughs> <not. laughs> and we'll be the German version. I don't want to hear the American version. 1984, he picks that. Oh, just go to commercial. We're on commercial already. (laughs) I was going to dedicate that to Harvey Weinstein and just like pick a random song. I don't even know what that would meant, but that's a funny song. song. That's why I picked that one. Hey, welcome back. Live from Dennis's house, 1984, a year in review. And we just played 1984 by David Bowie and 99 Loof Balloons by, I don't know what Nina? Loof Balloons, oh, it means Red Balloons yes, uh, by Nina, oh. right? She was German. So actually, can you recite that song in German for us now, uh, Sarah? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you said Sarah. Ich liebe dich. <laughs> All right, so I have a story about 1984. I remember that year, New Year's Eve, 1983, they used to be playing that David Bowie song all the time because you're turning into 1984. Uh So they were playing it all over the place, right? And I actually ran into Boy George because we're going to be spotlighting Boy George. You uh, ran into him? So at the Tower Records, (laughs) at the Tower Records in New York City, right? And it was New Year's Eve, right? So he comes up to me and he says, you got, you want to go to a party tonight? There's going to be a oh, lot of drugs. Here we go. He said, there's going to be a lot of drugs and a lot of sex. And I said, who's going? He said, just me and you. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> How so dare you? I don't even that. believe that. I just believe uh, you. All right. So I have to say, 19... You're living, you're living longer. Your chances of living longer are definitely going up. <laughs> 
1984 was the first year I heard that joke, actually. So, uh, yeah. Should have so, stayed in 1984. That's a great joke. Come on. That is a good uh, joke. It's an it's awesome right. joke. Yeah. So, um, anyway, there's a lot of stuff going on in 1984. We're going to talk about it. You guys are going to tell us your experiences in 1984. That um, Let me tell you a bit about what was going on. Let's talk about the <laughs> albums that were out that year. We already mentioned them. Purple Rain, Born in the <gasps> USA, U2, Unforgettable Fire, 1984 by Van Halen, Madonna, oh, yeah. Stevie Ray Vaughan, The Cause, Tina Turner, Pretenders, Wham, Make It Big. Oh, wow. I think there was a double entendre in there somewhere. Yes. <laughs> you had The Cure, Run DMC, Thriller by yeah. Michael Jackson. Wow. And then there was all the heavy metal albums too. I believe Rat had an album out that year. Out of the Cellar? Exactly. Oh. Yeah, Scorpions. Funny. This was the early years of all of this stuff, too. Mm-hmm. So it was so much different stuff going on. You had new wave, heavy metal, pop, punk, everything, you name it. And uh, TV. You know what was big in TV that year, Stephen? The it. Cosby Show premiered that oh, year. No. Remember him? Yeah. Exactly. Ooh, never heard of him. <laughs> Miami Vice. There has to be a picture well, oh, of yeah, Stephen yeah. wearing a Miami yeah. Vice outfit I somewhere. With yeah, the jacket and <laughs> yes. the shirt underneath, right, right, the right. sleeves rolled up. With the colored yeah, the pop t-shirt. Colors. Yes. Right. <laughs> and movies. Let's talk about movies. Yeah. Spinal yeah. Tap. Footloose, yeah. oh. 16 Candles, Splash, wow. Purple Rain, Gremlins was one of my purple. Oh, yes. Personal favorites. CBK. <laughs> and purple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh. Ghostbusters, Beverly Hills Cop, Karate Kid, Indiana Jones, Nightmare on End Street, uh, Revenge of the Nerds, and Stephen's Revenge favorite, Cannonball Run oh, Part 2. Oh, there so you go. You know, and, you know, know what, though? They all hold up. Most of those movies really hold up. All the cannonballs, you mean? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. <laughs> what year is Animal House? Oh, that was way early, 78 oh, yeah. or something like that. So you know what won the Oscar really? that year, though? Amadeus won oh, the Oscar. No. Movie Great. nobody saw. You didn't yeah. see it that. Was you did not see that movie. Yes, it was. Give us a synopsis. Uh, Who's it about? <laughs> well, that's Mozart. <laughs> Wasn't there a song, Amadeus? Yeah, Amadeus? yeah, I think that was from the movie, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, he wrote yeah. that. <laughs> they just adapted it. It was 10 years later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to admit that I just downloaded that song about three months ago because I just wanted to hear it again. So good. That guy was Boone in Animal House, Amadeus. That's right. right. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it Thomas Holt or something? Yes, exactly. So, all right, so I want to give one more story about something funny that happened to me in 84, and then you guys are going to tell me everything that happened to you. So, I actually had my first, well, not my first, but uh, for 1984, I had one of my first experiences in court that I. Cha-cha, My, yeah, right? What are you think dodging the draft? She thought it was Already you know, like, you always like, do that to me. I'm just going to smack you. <laughs> so anyway, I got a, a ticket by the police. First for, time, really? No, no, no. First oh. time 1984. Oh. Um, I got a peeing in public ticket. Oh, the public urination. I remember. Exactly. I used to call it PU. I, yeah, know, I know exactly what you Bellow had to have at least 50 yeah. of these. No question, I don't right? Know anyone who's actually, much like losing the house, I don't know anybody who's been cited for being in public. That's and amazing. not only That's cited. That was a big All right, deal so here's the thing. You're like in the we're, middle of the street? We were, no, we were delinquents yeah. and we were hanging out on the corner, drinking beer, punching each other, and uh, rolled up cigarettes in our sleeves. You know, it was like Lords of Flatbush in Lord Queens, Shire. New York. Yeah. And so we're drinking beer on the corner, so there's no porta potty there, right? So you got to go. So we were in front of like a store, like a bodega type store, right? So in the back, there's a parking lot. It was nighttime. So I go back there to go uh, pee on a tree, which Uh, most people would do, right? So I'm there and the lights like come up behind me and I'm like cursing. Come on. I'm trying to pee here. What are you doing? Turn off the lights, (laughs) right? right? And then I hear a voice. (laughs) Put Put that away. (laughs) (laughs) And turn around, <laughs> and then I see it's the cops, and I'm oh, like, and I, I'm so holding long. a beer in my hand at the same time. And you're That's how uh, skilled I was. Yes. Wow. So anyway, it's a lot to manage. Right, right. That's, <laughs> that they Is gave that what me. They come up with double fisted. <laughs> <laughs> so they give me a ticket and I have to go down to Queen's yes. Court and you know how horrible this is to go to a Queen's Court I'm sitting Just next to imagine. Father Rapers and Mother Rapers and Harvey Father Weinstein Rapers. and uh, wow. <laughs> every, every time I mention Harvey Weinstein everyone's got to take a drink oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I forgot to tell you that before. <laughs> so anyway, I, I go there, and it's my turn finally. You know, the uh, Charles Manson just went before me, and it's my turn to go up there for a peeing in public ticket. This guy has a quadruple homicide. Yes. <laughs> so I go up there. I'm chewing gum. I have my hands in my pocket. Oh, so you know God. how this is going to go. Yes. Right? The judge goes berserk on me. Nice. He's like, you son of a, how dare you <laughs> show my courtroom oh, no. chewing gum. Oh, You're okay. lucky I don't make you put that on the, on the end of your nose yeah, yeah. <laughs> or something. <laughs> right and i was like come at me bro take that robe off come at me bro (laughs) i didn't really say that i was thinking that (laughs) that yeah Yeah, right so i was like all right what do you want me to do with the gum i I can you know throw it on the floor or whatever and he proceeded to give me a 50 minute lecture and a 50 dollar fine and that you were so fresh uh, you know that was my hatred for judges sons of bitches they think that they're better than us when they're not I saw that judge right afterwards he was peeing in the parking lot (laughs) so there you go all right, so now that was my experience in 1984 growing up in Queens, New York as a rotten child. So now I'm interested in you guys, and that's why I brought this interesting, diverse panel here. So, Sarah, were you in 1984, were you in New Jersey or Pittsburgh, or where were you at this time? I was still in Pittsburgh. I was 14. Wow. Which puts me about awesome. ninth grade ish. So she's and, a uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I was just discovering rock and roll, actually. I had uh, grown up, my older sister listened to like pop and uh, like Beach Boys and Rick Springfield and Michael Jackson. So I hadn't been turned on to rock yet. And uh, I remember sitting in choir looking over a girl's shoulder and they were ooing and eyeing over a picture of Robert Plant. Oh. And he's just like sitting on a stool singing and I'm like, who's that guy? <laughs> like I hadn't even heard of Led Zeppelin, knew nothing about any of that. So it was a very, uh, it was a very interesting year for me. Yes. I, I just got immersed in the world of rock and by 10th grade I was a full on metalhead. Nice. There you go. <laughs> So, uh, did you get arrested in 1984 at all? Uh, um, I did not. My delinquent spree actually didn't start till the following year, and that's when I was frequently suspended oh. and uh, getting in various sorts See? of trouble. See, and this, this, I think this proves the point that rock and roll is no good. That it's <laughs> trouble. Right. That you were like a you know Sunday school girl right. with ribbons oh, in your yeah, hair, and, and then right, yeah. all of a sudden, yeah, in choir the next year, mm-hmm. you're in a heavy metal band, getting suspended yeah. from school. Yeah, and, the lines uh, are on fire. That's how it went down. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Dodging yeah. the draft. Yes. I was like, I was crazy. Peeing <laughs> <Tee in, laughs> <tee in> corners. <laughs> Yeah, imagine how hardcore a girl has to be to get a yeah. peeing in public yes. ticket. Sure. That's embarrassing. Peeing yes. as a girl outside is, is the worst. First of all, you got to make sure your pants are far oh, enough in front of you that you're really not peeing on them. Adorable. And angle yourself backwards, it's not fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys have it made. It's only That's for the beauty of being a man, that the right. world is our yeah. toilet, Steven. Yeah. It sure is. You know? <laughs> you and my dog. You and my dog. I actually have that tattoo on the back of my arm here. The world the is world my toilet. The world is my toilet. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> see, and that's that's why I, I you see that we've switched up the crew tonight too. Normally Sarah and Maccioli and Padrone are true, on together, but I had to break that crowd up because they were getting yeah, too getting rowdy. Too rowdy. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and that Maccioli and Padrone would get out of control and they would yeah. overshadow Sarah. They'd be yelling over her, right? Yeah. Turn the so, hose on. And right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they that, were very boisterous. I would Not say that, that we don't love you, right? But um, remember when we were watching it on the replays, Caroline Cha Cha, that we would always hear these gems coming out of Sarah that yes, were, the other right. guys were screaming <laughs> and we're like yeah. rewind that she said and something I, brilliant and I would say oh I oh, heard her awesome. but the other two were talking yeah this, this one make, laughs all night yeah. <laughs> she's the only one that would hear me yeah, right. yeah. Right. Oh, See? isn't this oh, nice now Sarah yeah. you have free reign you can talk I'm the obnoxious one <laughs> I'll be I'm, doing the yelling I always say I love Sarah Sarah is hysterical yes, yeah, but awesome. I was the only one who got to hear okay, it okay now I'm feeling pressure and this was the first time you've ever been on on the same show with Bello, I believe, too. No, we've uh, also no. no, we did one show. Oh, really? Which yes. show were you That's guys on? Your call? That was back in the 60s. I don't remember. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, actually, I believe it was uh, 84. 84, right? Yeah. Oh. It was uh, oh, Culture man, Club. Am yeah. I tired. So, all right, I have a question for you. Let's take a little trivia break now. Oh. Remember that commercial, Where's the Beef? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what yeah. was the woman's name that was yelling, Where's the Beef? Oh, I, and I, I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. Yeah. Was her name nope. Estelle? Nope. No. Clara it... Pella was oh. her name. There you go. Is that her real name or her character? No, uh, she's a commercial. Something. They didn't have a that was character's Wendy's, name. That was her right? real name. Yeah. She's still alive, surprisingly. <laughs> really? She's 184 now. Oh, isn't it? Come on. 
<laughs> so eating all that beef. Oh. <laughs> So cute, that oh, little pose. Yeah, Stephen dated her. He took her to the prom, actually. But Talk 19, about it. Okay, Did so you have a pee in public? Did you get arrested? That's not, what the public wants to know. In 1984, I pretty much just met you. Right. And 82, we met. I actually remember that. Yes. Wow. And I actually. We worked at the same supermarket. So oh. much. He was That's so. amazing. I forget what he said to me when I, my first day on the job. I <laughs> said, hey, you know any good places to pee around? <laughs> <laughs> but I remember I got to take saying, a leak. <laughs> I remember sneering at him and saying, God, he's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so here we are, 1984, and I am completely in love. Now, I was raised, like Dennis veal. would tell you, like veal. I was very protected <laughs> my whole life. My father kept me in a tiny in a stall. Box. <laughs> in a small tiny, crate. tiny stall. So, no sunlight. Oh. My first job outside of Atlantic Beach was a key food and I met this guy he walked past me and Dennis said I can't say his name but I'll use his initials MB <laughs> and I just fell Milton in Bradley. love with him <laughs> I just fell in love with him but <laughs> I Bradley. found out in 1984 what gay meant well I knew what <laughs> I knew what gay meant but my girlfriend Happy. my friend Carol didn't and so he came out to us I'll never forget and um, it like changed my whole life. Like I didn't, I knew what it meant. She didn't know what it meant, and it just like had never dealt with it before. So I'm immersed in 1984. <laughs> well, I was crazy in love with him, and and I didn't realize that blue flashing tights and pink <laughs> and no purple um leggings meant that a guy was oh. i didn't know. it was a very okay. androgynous time i yes, will give you yes, that yes, yes. i will give you that see and so. that that's going to lead into our spotlight later on right. we're going to be spotlighting boy george and culture club wow. and we right. have a very interesting <laughs> story about story. this <laughs> because another friend of ours yeah. was actually turned gay by boy george yes. but we'll get to that, that uh, later on yes. boy george and his magic wand <laughs> so. no that was 1984 remember it well yeah. Yeah. Tell about this Hanging club out. that you used to go to all I the time, to dancing. Club, what was it called? Malibu. Yes. Malibu. Everyone on Long Island knows this Everyone, club. Yes. And a lot of people, don't kid yourself, a lot of people from, like, you know, Queens. And right, right, yeah. It was very popular. popular. Yeah. It was huge. Did it you was, ever go there, Bella? I don't believe and so, but I definitely heard all, it. What about in P Pittsburgh? Uh, have you heard about this place, I'm uh, not going to. Uh, it did not reach <laughs> Pittsburgh, <laughs> well, unfortunately. I think I saw... I saw the best bands perform oh. before they were famous. They would come. Yeah, and perform. yeah, all and these I bands. Yeah. That's cool. Like who? Yeah, like, Michael I Jackson. Think, like you no. too was there. Yeah, yeah, all oh. these bands. Uh, and, Billy Idol. Uh, Billy Idol and Flesh for Lulu and oh. Gene loves Jezebel. Gene, I mean, it, the Cult. Ev all of the oh, '80s new wave all. bands. Everybody yes, yes. performed. Got their start in Bull Malibu, and and then went on. <laughs> but it was really new wave. It was, uh, yeah, but my wow. but. Prince was everything to me in 1984. Yes. Yeah. I think for the whole year in 1984, my friend and I went to see this movie. <laughs> Every day. Every oh, yeah. day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Every see, day in the now, movies. It made me cry a little. I have to I have to say that uh, Cha Cha always take tries to take credit for everything that I do. But the one thing that I'm actually giving her credit for is turning me on to Prince. Yeah. That back in nineteen eighty four I you had a lot, a lot of hang ups, hang -ups yes. right? So I had right. to overcome these with age because yeah. I thought this I was too cool. Yes. I thought I was like too cool Prince to listen then. to Prince and Michael Jackson yeah, back sure. then. But now I appreciate it and Prince love is it. A genius musician. Genius. Oh, of course. Genius. I'm the Absolutely. same way. It took me a long time to yes. come see? around. See? See? see how we're growing every day? We are, we're growing as people. <laughs> so, so now we're going to have to get a uh, point of view from Staten Island now of Bello. What were you doing in 1984 at this time? Well, in 1984... How old were you? I you, was a you senior say? in high school. Okay. And that's when I got my driver's license. You were 23? Right. <laughs> and, no, that wasn't... <laughs> The, uh, and the drinking age was 21, and uh, right, right. but I definitely had a drinking problem way, many years before that. Um, so I had my license, and my big thing was I would take the cars and wreck the cars, my parents' cars, As you and do. then report them stolen. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh my God. So yeah. a couple times it happened, maybe two, two or three times, and one time. <laughs> It was summertime of that 1984. I took the car on the golf course. <laughs> and, and, and in our neighborhood in uh, Richmond Town, there were a lot of red golf course. And uh, driving around, it was a lot of fun. 
<laughs> and I, I, I was going back, and I went off like a cliff. You know what I mean? And you know, like in the movies, like in the Dukes of Hazzard TV yeah, shows, yeah, yeah. Like, when you hit a Louise. ramp and you, you know, fly <laughs> in the air. Yes, no, that's no. not what happened at all. I came down and destroyed the car, and I must have been in some sort of blackout. And uh, I walked back to Richmond Town, and the next day I wake up, and my father's screaming, and he's like, what happened to the car? What? And I was like, oh. Automobile. So right away, I, I remember, I, oh, yeah, it was stolen, Dad. It was stolen? Why is it in front of the house? <laughs> so I, I, you know what Shit, I mean? they brought it back. They, yes, they stole it and dropped it off in front of the house, destroyed. So uh, w- while, w- <laughs> what happened was, one of my friends with a tow truck brought it back oh, to my house, did me a favor, and that I didn't remember. Hysterical. So that was like a typical... <laughs> Uh, I had to set a, it on fire real quick. Uh, yes, <laughs> it was too late at that point. I had a similar one just like that, that I crashed the car in the park, right. and then I took uh, my stuff out and I walked home, right? And then I was sleeping the next uh, morning, and the cops show up at the house, uh, and my mom wakes me up, and I was like, oh, you know, my car must have been stolen, you know? I left <laughs> yeah. it in front of the house, must have been yeah, stolen. Yeah. So the cops get me in the car to take me to the car, right? And they're going the wrong way, and I was like, no, you got to go, it's on over <laughs> that oh, side. Yeah. And they both turn around and uh, look at me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and they didn't care, you know. Uh, they just uh, uh, said, yeah, exactly. <laughs> "Yeah, but let's face it. I mean, you grew up in it, like, exactly. If you weren't right? killing somebody, you are, like right. they'd punch you in the stomach yes, and let you right. go, like yeah. Bellows yeah. said. I mean, the they were days. so busy with other crimes. Yeah, yeah anyway. so that's but, the beauty of growing up in a high crime area. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. You're, you're, you're petty free. nonsense. Yeah. And <laughs> Nobody can cared. I also say in 1984 sure. was my fir- and getting back to where I grew up on Long Island. Culture shock was going to where Dennis lived. <laughs> oh, that was I mean, is everybody holding the on wrong side of the track. Yeah. You would say, yeah, yeah, like, yeah definitely. We, oh. My parents would say, "Oh, you know what? You better stay there. <laughs> Don't try and come home." I'd be like, "Really? Because I'm sleeping at Chris's house. Maybe you better stay there." Yeah, we had. So um, that's how bad it was. They didn't want. We had a hangout home. house, you know, just wild, do whatever you want kind of house. Yeah. So uh, there's always that one house. Yeah, yeah was exactly. The best house. The one house. But 1984 was the first year of the MTV Video Awards. It was wow. the first wow. year of them all, and you knew who the hosts were. You're never going to guess. And how they picked these two, I'll never know. It was Dan Aykroyd and Bette Midler were the host. And I was like, really? Bette Midler? Exactly. And then, of course, that was the uh, year that Madonna dressed up in the wedding gown and was rolling all over the stage like a virgin. That was. Back then in 84, that was kind of cool. Yeah, Yeah. She was so iconic. You know, whatever you feel about her, it doesn't matter. In 84, she was influential. Yes. Every girl was either dressed like uh, yes, Madonna yes. or Pat Benatar. We all had yes. our fingerless gloves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, yeah. You know who cleaned up that year? Herbie Hancock. Wow. That, remember that uh, video? Dum, we had Rocket. Dum, dum, yeah. Dum, and it had like dum. all these animatronic <laughs> oh, things. Yeah, yeah. Right, that right. cleaned up. And the award, um, the best video of the year, you know who that was? It was You Might Think by The Cars. Oh. You know, that one was cool, too. Like, yeah. he turned into a bug and was flying oh, yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, yeah, they were know, pretty iconic yeah. for a while, man. They had a lot of hits. Uh, that year, yeah. it was just amazing, all these yeah. people. And the Cars and all these people that were on that uh, video show. Billy Idol was there yeah, was handing out nice. awards. Yeah. You know, everybody in the Spearing audience. at everyone. Yeah, and everybody, <laughs> was, it was just, you know, that was when MTV was cool. And I yeah. still didn't have it, though, because I'm growing right, up in that right, corrupt right, right. city. Wow. That's it. Uh, it took a no? long time. Yeah. We didn't have it either. No. My parents refused to get. My mom still doesn't have cable. <laughs> oh, I go oh home. My. I'm like, where's my MTV? Oh, <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. I don't want to watch that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> she's waiting for 3D TV, right? Yeah. 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 It's my mom holding out for the real technology. <laughs> I just want to say that I believe the Ramones were always at Malibu performing. Yes, the Ramones oh, awesome. were yeah, everywhere. They were like, Being from yeah, Queens, they true, were like though. what Bruce is to Jersey people. Yeah. That yeah. as pull out my album there, I saw the yeah. Ramones at least a hundred times. Oh, is that a sex euphemism? Awesome. Hey, a baby, what? pull out my album. <laughs> so look at this album here. This was it's released in 1984. <laughs> Too Tough to Die. And you can see that. There's all the Ramon signatures on it. Yeah. I got it. Dying. And yeah. yes, can They're you believe that? Anymore. Once again, <laughs> yeah. Harvey Weinstein's still alive. All the Ramones oh. are yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> it's strange. Yeah, they played it. Yeah, following everywhere. your rules. Yeah, they played They're everywhere. Awesome. All over the area. Yeah. I saw them a hundred times. Love them. Love them so much. So um, anyway, now it's time. That part of the show now where we're going to talk about an album that was very big this year. And here it is, Color by Numbers by Culture Club. Now let's uh, see what my notes. And you know, this was actually released in 1983, late 1983. Mm -hmm. But it 
surpassed 83 and was still popular all during 1984. Right. But it only went to number two on the charts. And you know why? Because all of these other albums that I named were clogging it up. That uh, Born in the USA and Prince and Michael Jackson all took up the one spot that whole two years, I think. Yeah, so uh, it was tough luck for them. But, you know, it was a... Really good album. Yeah. It sold more than 16 million copies worldwide. Wow. Certified triple platinum in the UK, quadruple platinum in the US. Ranked number 96 on Rolling Stone magazine's list of the 100 best albums of the 80s. And it is also included in the book 1000 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. That's true. So if you don't, if you have not heard this, you better go listen better to it hurry. and uh, smell it while you're at it, too. <laughs> oh, that's Very good. Right. So, and think about it. No one had ever seen anything like him. Yes. Boy yes. George. See, I that, remember the I first mean, time I saw we, him on a so dance show. Pioneer. You know, right. So desensitized to it. But he yeah. was like... In was 1982 like, oh, when he first see? came out. Yeah. See now he took he took Bowie. Of course, he was a big fan of Bowie, and he took that a whole nother mm-hmm. step. He Bowie did. was androgynous, but he switched off here and there, different yeah. personas. But Boy George was like this day and night. He yep. walked around the street looking like yeah, this, and yeah. you weren't sure is that a boy, is yeah. that a girl, right. you know? And he had well, a great voice. <laughs> That's what my father told that. me about the, the Adam's apple trick. You know what I mean? I'm oh, like, I'm yeah. Not, He's like, that's a boy. what are you watching, son? I'm like, uh, I think it's a girl. He said, I don't know, a girl. Look at it. She's got an Adam's apple. And then it came in uh, very handy a few years later. Uh, are we, are you gonna, stories. Are we going to hear this story? <laughs> no, that, that's that, was that, was that, that, that wasn't 84? No, it was probably oh, okay. 89. That was last so. week. All right, so, the, and the reason I picked this album, too, because there was such a good story and scandal surrounding uh, Boy George, I felt this would uh, add a lot. Speaking of rehab. <laughs> right, yes, well. yeah. So, uh, you know, this album, good album, great album, whatever you, Karma Chameleon actually went yeah. to number one off yeah. of this, and Church of the Poison Mind went to number I two, and he song. had some other hits and mm-hmm. stuff, you know, but then there was scandals. They, this was their second album, the first one, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me and all that stuff. But they didn't really have success to follow up this album after that. And it turned bad really quick. And the main problem was that they started an affair, Boy George and the drummer John Moss. Oh. And John Moss was not homosexual. He denies to this <laughs> No, no. He, de- he no longer denies it. Oh. That I just heard him on oh. an interview now because a, a few years back... Boy George the world has been dying to know. <laughs> Boy George was saying, you know, I wish he would just admit right. it, you know, oh. and uh, all of this. But, but wasn't there money at stake? Well, it was not that. The guy's like... now married with children, oh. and uh, you know that's pretty hard to talk about yeah. at the dinner table. Yeah, that's right. I remember one time I was sniffing Boy George's <laughs> bum. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. anyway, yeah, they started this crazy affair. They were talking about it, and it was just like crazy. It wasn't right. fun. They didn't go out to dinner and things like that. It wasn't right. a romance. They were either no. doing it or just punching each poppers. other in the fight, <laughs> yeah, in the face. Oh. You know, tumultuous, tumultuous. Very good. Ooh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <I'm edumacated. laughs> so and like the other guys in the band, uh, I heard the guitar player saying, you know, I got into this rock and roll band because right. I wanted to go backstage yeah. and meet chicks. Yeah. I'm in the middle of this homosexual drama oh. he said I, so I could have joined Judas Priest <laughs> oh, right. that was really funny when he said uh, that he said we're gonna meet all these guys yeah. like, and, I not. <laughs> and then you know and the reason they called themselves Culture Club is because they had such a diverse background you know they had the gay guy they had John Moss was Jewish the other gay guy <laughs> no. another gay guy <laughs> they had no, a Jamaican bass oh, player Jamaican and a guy. proper Britishman on guitar oh. so they called themselves Culture Club and John oh, nice. Moss was not homosexual. He went on well, to say that that he happened? that he said he fell in love with a man. That, oh, well, you know, yeah. if you say you're not that homosexual, happens. that means you're that, not. Yeah. Everybody, is. You know, regardless of who you're you making blame out with, guy. or <laughs> on other things. it's all about the word. <laughs> Yeah, I mention any of us. She's the uh, best. So, all right. So then, after they broke up, uh, Boy George just couldn't handle it, and the band he uh, he, yeah. he went downhill quick. They said okay. he went from nothing to complete heroin addiction in like two wow. days. Right? <laughs> two days. Yeah. That's how heroin addiction happens. <laughs> wow. exactly. Two days. That's how that starts. That's it. 
Wow. Which, Good with stuff. The, which with the paint dripping off the head look that he cultivated yes. in recent Medic. years. And he got into a lot of trouble. He was constantly in trouble everywhere. London, New York. Yeah. He was getting, getting arrested. Fights, right? And no, worse than that, people were dying in his house. Oh, that yeah. Two yeah. different people that, right. died in his house. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, nothing happened to him because, you know, he was boy George. But He was he, outside <laughs> peeing. <on a> tree. <laughs> right. in 2009, he was arrested. And this one really stuck because he was sentenced to 15 months in prison. And this is what he did. He uh, was arrested for false imprisonment that he held a male escort against his will wow. and he handcuffed him to a wall and beat him with a metal chain. Oh, oh my, my goodness. God, that's <laughs> that ridiculous. He was, he was there for a nude photo session, this uh, male escort, and Boy George felt that when he was outside peeing, the guy tried to hack into his computer uh-huh. oh. and he... <laughs> Guess oh he didn't like that. So he tied him to the wall and whipped him with a metal chain. And, it's like uh, a Rick James incident. Yeah, that's, that's frowned good. upon wow. in uh, <laughs> London. They don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> So, so you think this is Staten Island? <laughs> yeah, right. So he was sentenced to uh, four months community service. No, he was sentenced to 15 months, and he ended up serving four months. Okay. And then he was out still. But if I tied time. Bellow to the wall and whipped him with a metal chain, <laughs> I'd be in jail okay. for 15 years, right? So, um, And that's yeah, another time. Yeah. I remember this. You guys must remember this. In New York, he was arrested, Boy George, and he was... Uh, sentenced to community service. Yeah, he was picking up trash. Yeah, right? right. He was picking up trash yeah. in New York <laughs> City. That. And uh, like everybody's going crazy so oh. they had to bring him back, you know. They were following have celebrities him around. Exactly, picking up trash. Exactly, it right? Work. In New York That's City. Insane. So, uh, yeah, so that was the downfall, the rise and fall of Boy wow. George and Culture Club. But then he went to rehab, he got better, and I think he's doing pretty good now. He looks like he's doing good. Yeah. They had a reunion, the band, and they've been out here and there. He's and, been uh, on the Housewives show. Right, right, yeah. yeah. We see him, he looks good, and his voice is good. He's right. always had a really good voice. Oh, I like this voice. Loved yeah. him. It was really yeah. cool. So, it was uh, a great, great band. Yeah, and he was so <laughs> 84, you know, one of the yeah. quintessential icons of 1984. Right. Yeah. You won't yeah. have anyone like Boy George ever right. again. Yeah, so we forgot to tell about our other friend who was turned gay by be- Boy George. Who was right? Let's bring gay. this story yes. full circle. His initials are CC, and he was my friend from four years old. And he was good at baseball. <laughs> and so there was, there was never any indications that he was gay. He never he did anything. Everyone knows if you're good at baseball, was, you can He was my, my, be gay. Yes. He was my No one first. wants to hold a stiff bat if they're straight. <laughs> catching, catching. Uh, so Boy George was the actual oh, reason. Hell, so we're catching. getting to it. Wait, Boy George does come into play. Right. That in 1984, yeah, Boy George him. hit, and we had a Halloween party that year. Mm-hmm. And this guy shows up dressed in Boy George costume and for the Halloween party. Very good. And he never took it off. Never took it off. Oh. That, he was my first friend at Key Food. I love him. And next thing Too you know. Too for Key Food. Are they paying you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, no, they're not. So, yeah, so then. The, uh, <laughs> like, you answered me. <laughs> so, right after that, you know, he called me and our childhood friends all of, no, together for a summit meeting, you know, and we're like, what does this idiot want from us? You know, right, guys right. act, you know, uh, I'm not as, uh, you know, diverse as I right, am back, now yes. back then right, in 1984. Sure. Yeah, you know, highly tolerant like, teenager. Am, yes, I, you know, <laughs> peeing in the street. So um, we're all there, and we're like, what is this idiot going to say? And then someone's yeah. going to say, he's going to say he's gay. And we're like, no, he's not. He's really? going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then, of course, that's what he said. And uh, so, ipso I facto, the first thing it goes back to boy George. Wow. Stop lying. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. to this day, he is still keeping this charade going. So this is some 35 years later. So this is the biggest prank, the most yes, elaborate prank. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's like... You're All right, yeah. sticks with if a story. You, huh? If you're listening, CC, it's time to come clean. <laughs> I don't understand how Michael's initials are CC. <laughs> no, these are two different guys. <laughs> it was, right. Michael, what do you mean? Michael, what's his face? Who's usually here? What? It's a joke. Oh. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about her, Michael. No, oh. no, no. Oh, so it's oh, oh, Michael. Oh, <laughs> We're halfway oh, there, folks. Oh, I've been heating for the last thing. You said thing. it was Michael Bolton. <laughs> so this is like that when uh, the guy in the witness protection program yeah, is, Bolton hold on. Michael Bolton In that, um, you know, when they're interviewing some guy who's wanted by the mob and he's in the dark, <laughs> right? And then the, the cleaning pressure. lady comes in and turns the light on. <laughs> <laughs> the two-way mirror goes away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, my 
Oh, oh, very good. Very good. Oh, All God. right, so there you have it. So Everything, Everything 1984. Well, I remember a great quick joke. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, of course, God. I love jokes. Yeah. A Roman walks into a bar, holds up two fingers. Five beers, please. <laughs> <laughs> at the night that's a high, uh, senior year high school get so. it I get it alright that was a good one alright so we're way over time we could probably make two shows out of this 1984 and 1984 part 2 awesome. so see this is good stuff here I knew this was going to be a good combination Sarah shine today without people Very oppressing nice. her and crushing her dreams yes she always so, shines alright so now we're going to play some music and I dedicated a song to each of you for oh, this ooh, closing lovely. here so I'm going to dedicate Sunglasses at Night by Corey awesome. Hart to Stephen Bellow. Love it. Love it. And I'm going to play Round and Round by Rat for Sarah. Appreciate and I'm going to play it. Heaven by Psychedelic Furs for Cha Cha. Because yes. we just saw them on the night and it was one of her favorite things. Very so, cool. you know, check us out live from Dennis's house, Manhouse Magazine Radio Hour. Check us out, manhousemagazine.com. And we'll be here for all of your comedic needs and all of your musical right. needs. So here we go. We're out. Let's hear it for us, 1984. Woo-hoo. We're all.